how to weigh, you know, like the, my, my personal interest versus the domain knowledge that I already have, um, what would be more, more important? And then if you are in the position that you are trying to switch your career to a different industry, what would you care about the most? I'm going to open the floor for some questions now to the panelists. Um, so uh, who's, who's going to be the first volunteer for questions? We have a question there. So just a quick introduction, like a one line, your name, and then you can. Hi, um, I'm Jackie. I work on, in analytics for a game company. So I make a mobile game. It's actually a very female friendly. It allows you to put furniture in your, in, in your home design like bedrooms and living rooms, but that's not my question. So just to follow up actually um, for Katie, you mentioned like uh, there are a few things that you, what you really regret is that you didn't really do those things. So I was curious what, what, what stopped you from doing that, those things Hot back question. then. And have you been able to, or have you figured out ways to address those things? And have you slaked the evil dragon inside you? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very personal, um, <laughs> but that's why I'm here. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's always been like, you know, like I have been in a position and like, I thought I really deserved a promotion, but I was afraid to ask for it. Uh, Cause I thought like, I don't know, like they would think like, oh, she's ungrateful or like, oh, she thinks she's better than she is. And like, honestly, like that probably wouldn't have happened if I had asked, like I, I never did. Um, and I regret it, I probably would be in a different place. I maybe wouldn't have uh, moved to different companies. Who knows what would have happened. Um, and now I'm just very proactive. Like if I think something should be happen, I raise my hand in a meeting and I say like, well, I think that this, like I disagree with this, like I'm, I've gotten to a point where I'm just brutally honest. Like I don't really care who knows what I think. And like, that's a really hard thing to do. <laughs> don't always do that. Uh, you definitely need some, uh, like it helps now that I'm more senior in my career that I can protest. Um, uh, but it's something that like, I also I try to use it to help other people too. Like if there are more junior members of my team who are in a place where they don't feel like they can speak up, I do it for them. Um, and it's, it's just a matter of like knowing what you value and know what you believe in and being willing to stand up for it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a hard one. Um, so uh, who's, the, who's gonna be having the next question? Hi, uh, my name is Emma. I'm also an analyst uh, in a mobile game company. Um, I have one quick question to all of you guys. Um, so I, learned, I majored in business and my background is marketing. And then I switched my career path to data analyst uh, recently. But uh, I landed in the mobile gaming uh, industry, but then I realized that my personal interest is not like going towards the like, gaming because I don't play game. And then... <laughs> But it's a really like fascinating industry and also like has a robust data set. I think I can grow definitely. But uh, in terms of finding out your own interest and following uh, your uh, career path that align with your passion. Um, when if I try to switch my industry or not even uh, in my career path, but also you, I majored in the different uh, like the business, right? Uh, what, how I can find what I truly enjoy. And then uh, the second question, follow question will be, if I switch the industry, I'm afraid of like losing my domain knowledge. And then you, like Kathy, you emphasized on like having a domain knowledge in your um, career path. So um, like how to weigh, you know, like the, my, my personal interest versus the domain knowledge that I already have, um, what would be more, more important? And then if you are in the position that you're trying to switch your career to a different industry, what would you care about the most? Or I feel like you mentioned a little bit about following your interest maybe. Yeah, I mean, like the, like, I guess some questions for you would be like, do you already have a sense of like, a general field that you would be interested in just like from your daily life is it like health is it like social networks and things like that and then um so in terms of like which area you would want you would want to uh, do and and then in terms of like uh switching like areas i think that like there's not necessarily things that are like 
that different. Like I was doing transportation at um, at Berkeley, and then I switched to like social networks. And so there's there's still graphs that are involved, but in some sense the things are still pretty different. And now I've been doing a lot of work on integrity, and yeah, we still use the structure of graphs, but it's still like a very very different and new field. Um, and I mean, I think that as long as you're excited and like willing to learn. Um, there's not really anything that's not possible. When I look at the profile of people from that, like data science analytics at Facebook, we have people who come from like all different fields. Like the number of people who study social networks uh, is not that large. We have people who come from biology, from physics, from math, from like anywhere. And then they're just like excited about the product. It's not that everyone knows about like um, how to develop like messenger kids or like a video product or things like that and you just learn and as long as it's something that you're excited by uh, and it's also not like you're on your own like you're gonna have people to learn from you're gonna have like the pms who also have like a really strong product sense and uh, and people who've been in the field and in the area for a longer time that you're gonna be learning from so in some sense there's there's all of that that you can um, build on Thank you, Claude. Any more questions in the back? Hi, I'm Trina. I'm a data scientist at a online edu education tech platform called Course Hero. So not Coursera, although it's very similarly named. Um, so this is a question for Katie. Um, you mentioned a couple of podcasts and blogs that you really like to learn data science. So I wanted to ask you what your top favorites were and why. Okay, uh, so uh, I really like Data Skeptic. Uh, for, this is, I'm gonna start with podcasts. I love Data Skeptic. I really like not so standard deviations. Uh, linear digressions is great. Um, and this one is more like pure stats, uh, but the effective statistician is also very good. Uh, in terms of blogs, um, the KDD uh, website um, has just like a million data science articles on a ton of different things. Same with towards data science. Uh, again, like more of a pure stats thing, Andrew Gelman's blog is great. Uh, the Stitch Fix data blog has a ton of really interesting stuff on all sorts of different um, data science like domain areas. Like they'll have stuff about algorithms, they'll have stuff about data engineering um, all over the place. Uh, and then also I really like Locally Optimistic, which is more about like strategy and like how to build like a data team. And like there's lots of really good Twitter accounts, uh, Carla Gendry, like that's a good fire hose of tons of data science content. Kirk Bourne, um, Vicky Boykiss is hilarious uh, and talks about data science all the time. Um, and since I work at Reddit, I'll plug Reddit. Also a great place to learn about data science. That was smooth. Uh, r slash data science, uh, r slash machine learning. If you like uh, NLP, r slash language technology is great. Um, r slash probability theory, r slash ask statistics. There's a lot. Um, next question. We'll, we'll get, yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Shefali and I'm an undergrad at Berkeley and I'm interning in data science. I have a question about advanced degrees because it seems like a lot of companies have that requirement. Like we need a PhD, we need someone with a master's degree. And it seems like that barrier is still there. So even if you like just have a bachelor's and have those same skills, it seems like there are a lot of barriers to overcome. So I was wondering on your end, what are some things that you're doing to make sure that you can get people with those same skills? And how would you recommend for like data scientists and people who want to be data scientists to like, what would you recommend that they do? I don't have a PhD or a master's degree. So you don't need to have one to be a data scientist. Um, there are a lot of companies that hire junior data scientists. Uh, that's a great way to get in. Um, master's programs are also great. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that like working with data science master's students, I'm like, wow, I wish I had known that <laughs> when I was getting started. Um, but like a lot of times, like something that's very important to realize about job requirements is a lot of times they're more of a wish list. Um, the hiring manager doesn't necessarily care if you have every single requirement. You know, that reminds me about this. There's a study. I'm, I'm going to butcher a little bit uh, because I don't remember all of it. Or do you remember most of it? Yeah, why don't you? Why don't you? I think the, I think we're thinking about the same thing. There was like some study about like the job requirements and like how people apply to the jobs. And basically you looked at women and they all had like 
way beyond the job requirements and you looked at men and they had like half of the job requirements. I mean, I don't have like the exact numbers in mind, but like that was kind of the TLDR of, uh, of that. And so it's just like, I mean, the same of like, what would happen if I send this email? Like what would happen if you like apply? Uh, like, it's not like the recruiter is going to think like, ah, who's that person who applied? Like, <laughs> They have like way too many resumes to review to like think about it twice. Um, so if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. At least you gave it a try. Um, but like, yeah, don't don't overly worry about uh, about that. And I mean, like, it, even if like your dream job is something that like right now you're too junior about, like find a way around. Like, I mean, for example, like yeah, on on my team, everyone has like previous research experience, mostly from PhDs. I mean, it could be from research experience in industry, but um, it's like you have like five plus years of previous experience before starting. Uh, but like we have people who are internal transfers who started like as junior um, data scientists in analytics, and then they transfer to our team. Like I, this, um, again, my team who's done that and he's like superstar. Um, so, so there's not like, don't let things like block you from uh, pursuing what you want to do. And in some sense, like PhDs are great, but they're very like, I mean, they can be amazing and they can also be like not the right thing for you. Uh, and I wouldn't just do that because like, kind of like that's the checkbox for something that uh, I want to do later. Like there's, there's always going to be other ways. The internal transfer is a great tip. Like, I feel like I don't have a background in optimization research that much. My, my training was more statistics and machine learning. But I've transferred to a team whose focus is on OR, and I would never have considered that or applied directly for that. But I'm, but I'm learning so much more now. So that's a, that's a really good tip. Um, any more questions? We'll take one last question, and then I don't want to keep, keep you from your networking and beverages and food. Thanks. Um, I'm Charlene. I, I work as a data scientist in a finance company. Uh, this question is for all of you. I want to get your take on the pros and cons uh, for keep growing as a data scientist as an individual contributor versus um, actively pursuing or uh, expand your role to take on more management role. And related to that, I want to get your uh, advice on what's the most important thing we should focus on developing in order to get a more senior role, either as an individual contributor or a management role? Great question. This is something I struggle with, so I'm actually looking forward to the answer here. Or do you want to start? Uh, sure. I mean, um, I think for the longest time and maybe for older industries, like management was like the one way to think about if you wanted to grow your career. Uh, I think things have really changed and most companies now have like parallel tracks for uh, ICs and managers. So it's really about like finding the things that like drives you. Um, and so it's not like, oh, I should go in management because I have to now, like now we want people going into management because they really want to. And because like they care about growing the people uh, on their team, they want, they care about like growing the organizations and, uh, and things like that. And so to decide if like, that's the thing for you or not, uh, I think there's usually a lot of, um, opportunities by like, uh, mentoring others by like having interns, um, that's some place where you can like already get a feel for what it's like to like help others uh, grow their careers and find their path um, as well as provide like both um, like both technical and like more career um, um, advice and uh, and mentorship. Um, I think for both um, ICs and managers, um, things that are going to be expected is leadership. Uh, and you can be a leader whether you're uh, like a people manager or an individual contributor. But as you grow, you're going to like want more influence. Uh, it's going to be either by like working on like the most uh, technical things that like you're the only person to um, that you're the only person who's going to be able to solve that. It's going to be because uh, you're like 
like finding the technical direction of a problem or it can be because you're uh, moving into people management but eventually you want to like people behind you like you want to like get them get them with you convince them that um like of your vision and of like the right path to take and this is true for um for both tracks i would say let me see yeah i think i have one thing to add on top of all those uh remarks is if you look back uh on your day on your previous weeks what part of it did you enjoy the most and i feel like i'm also at a time where i'm uh thinking about those two different tracks and is it the meetings with the PMs and the planning and like scoping out the work for the next two halves, for example, that excited me or was it the time where I was uh, on my script building the algorithm or looking at results? And I think uh, trying to look back at your days and because you do have both um, already, I'm sure, and you can just look at your meeting and uh, wonder, well, did I like that planning meeting? Did I like being part of the discussion about uh, where should the, the, the art go or did I like better um, working on my algorithm and making it better and because I thrive, that's how I thrive, then that's, that, that's how I'm uh, viewing the choice as well. Yeah, it's important to be very honest with yourself about what parts of your job you like the most. Management is a separate career track. Um, a lot of people go into management because they think that's what they need to do. And as uh, Odd said, like, you don't have to do that anymore. There's totally another path. Uh, but like a lot of people, they go into management and at the end of the day, they can't remember what they did because it's all very ethereal. Uh, it's all about like building consensus or like making someone else better. And like, if you want to be doing things and building things concretely, it's probably not the right path. Management is a lot more about growing people and helping other people get to be uh, where they can be the best versions of themselves. Um, and in terms of like how to grow yourself, um, this is true for either path, uh, but uh, I think it's especially true for ICs as they move further on in their career. And it's one of the best pieces of career advice I've ever received, uh, which is learn how to say no. <laughs> it's, it's really hard. Uh, you want to help a lot of people. Um, and like, if you like your work, you want to do tons of stuff. Uh, but you can't, you can't help everyone and do a good job. Uh, you have to pick at some point and figure out where you can have the most impact and where you can help the most. Um, that's how you grow into a, a senior data scientist or a manager, or whatever you need to do. And also, I think one thing to add to all that is it's not a one-way street. Um, it's, I've, I have at least a few people in my circle at Uber who've decided to pursue man, uh, the managerial track, did it for a year or two, didn't like it, and went back to an IC role. And it didn't, it didn't damage their career growth. It didn't damage, it, it didn't put them back in years. It just had a different perspective because you still need to have leadership roles to be in senior roles in an IC as well. So it's not independent, it's, but it's just a different way of doing things. So you, you can, if you're, if you're like, again, adding to Katie, what Katie said, you, you regret what you don't do. And if you're always like, oh my God, I feel like I would love being a manager, just give it a shot and you don't like it, just get back. It's not, it's not difficult. All right, thank you everyone. I wanna take this moment to, to thank all the organizers, uh, all the amazing effort that went behind, uh, Springboard, Wisdom, the Women in Data ERG at Uber, uh, the recruiting uh, team at Uber, and uh, the panelists and you audience. I think we all deserve a big round of applause. Thank you so much.